So I've been wanting to make this video for some time now. I've struggled making videos lately um, of me like talking like this, but I'm going to try to do more of that whenever that is possible, whenever I'm able to do that. Um, to today's video, I wanted to talk about something that I've realized, I guess. And I realized this probably about a week ago, maybe a couple days ago. And it's really, really important. And, um, you know, I've been struggling to hold down a solid job um, for the past couple of years, I'd say. Maybe past like two years. Now, before that, my entire life, I, I had two full-time jobs. Um, both in management, one was at a bank, and then the other one was in a retail pharmacy. And I never struggled with that before, but I have been now. And although the pharmacy experience, that was there for a long time, that was like 15 years. And, you know, it was just time to part ways. There was some issues with the new district manager, I'd say, but every, every, every other person I got along with great. Of course you, you, you come across within those 15 years, some, some people that you're like, okay, I, I don't really want to work with that person anymore, but you still have to do it. But the, the bank, I was there for about five years and that is pretty much the situation I'm referring to the most when I talk about toxic work environment and major issues, um, especially with my manager that, that I had. And, um, and the whole, well, not the whole, uh, staff, but towards the end there, pretty much that whole, the whole staff that was there, including my manager, cause I was the assistant manager. They were, it, it was so toxic and it was, it was absolutely ridiculous. And what I've come to realize is based on, on that experience for the most part alone, and some of with the other job that I was talking about, I'm absolutely petrified to find another job and possibly have that same situation or something similar happen again to me. The bank got so bad. I actually had, I actually walked out from my shift. That is so unlike me and something I never thought I would ever do. Uh, it was got so bad. I kept asking for a transfer. I, like I said, I'd been there for almost five years in the same branch and they just would not, the, the regional manager just would not, move me and you know the, the 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 whole team that was at my branch like it was everything was falling apart and it was pretty much all my manager's fault she allowed it all to happen and she's the one that promoted a lot of it and, and a lot of the toxicity that's there I know that now but in the moment at the time I didn't I didn't realize what was going on I just knew I needed to get out of there and um I'm just, I'm so petrified to, to have a similar situation happen again to me. And, and, you know, I've gotten part-time and some full-time jobs here and there over the past couple of years and in merchandising and in retail, especially, I just keep running into toxicity and, and more so, um, those same emotions, those same feelings that aren't good ones that I had in my past jobs start to come back up again. And I don't want to feel those because it, it, they're not good. They don't, it doesn't feel good. And I made a list of, so I, I've been thinking about that, like the fear that's there. So I'm going to be trying to, I'm going to, I'm going to try to work through that fear, whatever that is. And I've written, I've written down a couple of things here and there to, to kind of discuss. And 
I also want, when I find a new therapist, I would like to kind of go over this as well and, and try to work on, on all of this. But, um, you know, obviously running into another toxic work environment is something I'm, I'm petrified of, I'm, I'm, I'm scared, scared of. Um, that's probably the biggest thing that I've, that I've noticed. And when I recognize that toxicity, you know, after some time, I, it, it really freaks me out. And I like almost go running for the high hills or I just don't, I don't know how to fully handle it. Um, yet. And also that, and this has pretty much been every job so far, like any boundary that I set for myself that are reasonable seems to be walked all over it within a matter of, of time. And then I have to, um, you know, maintain those boundaries. And, and to me, that's exhausting. It's just, it's so exhausting to have to keep, to have to keep reiterating those boundaries to your, up like your management, your, your superior, whatever you want to word it. And they just keep going against it or they keep challenging it and challenging it. You know, whether they're doing it on purpose or not, it's, it, it just doesn't make for a good work environment. And, and it, it, it makes my anxiety go through the roof because I don't want to keep saying something over and over again when I've already asked and said, and we've already talked about this. And all of a sudden now it's a problem. And, you know, every single job that I've had of recent, they've all had issues with some simple boundaries that I've had. And, you know, I'm just going to give an example of a, of a boundary of mine that's very reasonable. Uh, one of the jobs, they kept trying to force me to work overtime. And I'm like, when I came on, when I signed up, I wasn't interested in any overtime. I know there's plenty of people that are and that want extra money. I'm struggling just to stay at work to, to, and to maintain a job. I don't need any overtime as of right now. Thank you for the offer, but I, I just don't need it. And, and I, well, I do need it, but I don't want it right now. It, it's too much. So that's a boundary I've set that's very reasonable because no one can force you to work overtime. That's, that is not a law. That's not anything. That's not a policy anywhere. You, you can't, you can't be forced to work overtime. Uh, I think that actually has legal ramifications if that is the case. And I'm running into that a lot in the jobs nowadays that are, they're forcing you to try to, to they're trying to really get you to, to take that overtime. And it's like, um, why can't we, why can't all the work get done in the 40 hours or the 30 to 40 hours I'm working per week? I don't understand. So, um, you know, and I struggle with, with just that. So, and that's me, that's me personally, but it seems like those boundaries always get like kind of walked all over and then they keep asking me and asking me and it, then they start making it look like, you know, I'm the bad guy because I, I don't want the overtime and I don't want to work and go and help out all these other, these places and drive really far. No, <laughs> the answer to that question is always no. And I said that very nice. I said it like I couldn't be any nicer about it. I said, no, thank you. Thank you for the offer, but I'm never going to want that overtime. So that's a great example of what I mean by setting boundaries and that they kind of start getting walked all over and I have to sit there and maintain them the whole time. It's exhausting and it sucks uh, that I won't be enough. I mean, this is something I struggle with no matter what, not only in the work aspect of my life, but just my personal life, uh, not feeling good enough for uh, anyone or anything. And uh, I'll get taken advantage of doormat. So the doormat thing and people pleaser thing, that was, that's a huge issue. And that was a gigantic issue when it came to the bank, especially I was trying to impress all of them constantly. And they weren't people that would ever be impressed or and like my boss, especially, she just took credit for everything. Like didn't even matter. And, you know, I had a lot to learn cause I didn't know I wasn't in banking. So I, I was a manager I was, as I was hired as an assistant branch manager. So I had to learn the teller end, the banking end and all the operational stuff. It was a lot to learn. Um, but I was, I did it and just never got any thanks for it or never got any like attaboy or she just took all the credit all the time. 
Um, and, and you know, simple, uh, my work ethic, it, I'm a hard worker. So unfortunately in, in this day and age, I feel like people like me tend to get taken advantage of because I'm going to keep trying to people please and trying to impress and trying to, I, I, my work ethic. So boom, 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 boom. I'm going to really like work real hard when I'm there. That's the thing. I, when I'm there, I work extremely hard. And I, I've found that pretty much in every job, I have been taken advantage of at some point. And, and I think that's pretty much everywhere and anywhere nowadays. But I hope you get what I mean when I'm talking about that. Um, and also, that, you know, my, my manager, my boss, I don't like the word boss for some reason, but yeah, manager, boss, the person that's in charge that I report to will also be toxic, like I have dealt with before, and I'm sure many of you have as well. And that is just a recipe for disaster because that usually means that when the highest up or the higher ups are toxic and, and behaving that way, then usually everyone lower, not everyone, I shouldn't say everyone, but the majority of how that environment works and the people within it, it's all run as a toxic workplace. And that, and everyone's very competitive. That's the other thing. I don't like all the competition. I like to work together. I like to be a team. But when you're working in a bank, especially, it's very competitive because you have sales goals and everything. But we're a team, we're a branch, and we're trying to work to get our sales, hit our sales goals all together. But at the same time, my manager and, and the way that the, the, actually the whole company, that whole bank is run is competitive, like uh, a competitive in nature. And I just, I, I, I can't stand that. I really can't stand that. Uh, I think, you know, customer service is something that I, you know, and, and just offering great service and, um, you know, helping people, especially when it comes to financials, that's what I was in it for, not for getting sales and, you know, jamming credit cards down people's throats to open up new accounts and all. So that's just kind of some examples of what I'm talking about when I say that I'm fearful, <laughs> to say the least, of the whole job situation. And I'm going to try to work through all of that somehow, some way. And I think, you know, definitely a therapist that specializes in something along those lines would be extremely helpful and supportive for me. Uh, but also me sharing all of this right now and me making these lists and thinking about all of this is helping in itself because I'm able to work through it a little bit more and I can kind of process that fear and and, and kind of what it all means and, and how I can work through it in the future so that this isn't such a roadblock for me because you got to work, you know, you got to have a job. So um, the other thing real quick, so... It, this kind of ties into relationships and I'm going to do a separate video for this, but like, in, like intimate relationships, especially, and even like friendships, uh, and, and I'm talking new ones, obviously. I'm so fearful that the person will be toxic either if I, you know, looking for a friend or an intimate partner that, that I, I'm petrified of that that I don't, I stay, I stay completely away from it. Now making new friends, I, I don't, I, I wouldn't say that I shy away from that, but usually of late that hasn't worked out too well. That's a whole separate video and I will make that soon, but I hope all of that made sense. Uh, I hope you understand why I'm sharing this stuff. It is great for me, but if any of you are struggling out there with, with, a situation similar to what I've been talking about in this video, please comment below. Let me know the situation. Let me know how you're dealing with it and what works for you if you're willing to share. Um, and, you know, as always, please subscribe to the channel, like, share this video, and turn on those notification bells. I can't stress that enough. I'm going to leave you guys with what I always leave you with, and that is, of course, be kind to others, but most of all, be kind to yourselves. 
It's known as self-compassion. Take care, everybody.